Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So this is saying that people's trust in physicians decreased from 71.5% of people saying they trusted their physicians to 40.1% from April 2020 to January 2024. Why do you think that happened? Uh, well, yeah, maybe you want to come and join us over on Patreon. Uh, this is a drop, and so this is a, a Patreon exclusive uh, that, as you can see, the clock is ticking down. Uh, it's going to be released in nine hours, 36 minutes, and so many seconds. Uh, Patreon exclusive. Um, this is a new feature that they have at Patreon where um, people can watch and interact you know, uh, with each other. So it's, it's kind of like a live, um, but it's a live for the Patreons. So it's kind of cool. I think this is fun. So, you know, I mean, I like Patreon. They have some things that they've been putting in lately, which we like. Uh, it seems to be helpful for people. And especially it's the connecting aspect, I think, is um, really healthy. Yes, absolutely. So uh, if you feel so inclined, uh, it's scheduled for um, 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, that is, I believe, our central time <laughs> is what I got it for. Uh, so again, you could bop over to Patreon and join us for that release. Meanwhile, you have the U.S. declaring Gonzalez victor in Venezuela's election and rejecting Maduro's claim. Uh, Maduro has been uh, seen interacting with the public and explaining history, giving history lessons and how it was really uh, Russia or the Soviet Union uh, that ended up defeating Hitler in WW2. Um, you know, again, history, history, history. It's written by the victors and it's rewritten multiple times. It, it, that's the reality. We can't, you can't trust anything in the historical records that has been um, more and more apparent to many people as we go down this road so here you go uh, it, yeah you know haven't we been down this road before yes we have it, it's deja vu you know Elon says good as he's wearing his little red and black armor befitting uh Nibirian king yes. yeah yeah Nibirian yeah Nibiru yes that's what we're talking about here now on to news from Mars what's mm. he talking about uh Israeli defense minister says we don't want war meanwhile they killed a negotiator killed a negotiator's family bombed the capital of Lebanon bombed the capital of Iran in fact bombed four different countries in in like 24 hours and they don't want war. Mm. Yeah, it, it just... <laughs> the, the things that leave you speechless. Here, I, I, I hate to break your legs and make it so you can't walk, but I really don't want to do this. It's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we see some rockets uh, were launched towards Israel from Lebanon as well. Again, uh, I, I keep thinking to the Polish psychic Christoph that we've spoken of so many times uh, because he says in 2028 he sees Israel much larger than it is now. In, in fact, many fold all the way to the Iraq border. So, you know, will Lebanon even uh, cease to exist as a country? Will it just become part and next? by uh, Israel, maybe Syria as well, maybe Jordan as well. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Meanwhile, a lot of airlines are suspending flights, canceling flights, and avoiding the airspace around Iran, Lebanon, and Israel, uh, as the thoughts are that this is going to escalate into a wider regional war. Certainly seems like that has been part of the plan for a very long time. We've seen so many farmer protests in Europe, but this is Idaho. So here you have, again, farmers uh, being told there's no water for food, but there's plenty for lithium mining. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, these these guys don't mess around either. Um, the, the people in Idaho are pretty strong. They're pretty stout. They generally find a way. So this is worth uh, keeping an eye on and see how to see how they do it. 
there's an obvious to many war on humanity by the uh, elite of this world that feel that, again, they don't have to abide by any laws or rules or regulations, and they can do things uh, that others can't. And, you know, when it comes to food, it feels like, uh, you know, they will not be lacking. And they will have organic yeah. because they know better. They're, they wouldn't eat GMOs. Uh, no. And they don't do certain things that they recommend others to do. It's just blatantly obvious. So the homeless in San Francisco are getting evicted from their tents. Uh, they, they can't plant their tents anymore. They're an eyesore. And this is exactly what the system, it, what is the system really saying? It, it's really saying leave the planet you know what are they supposed to do hitchhike with uh, elon to mars well, that might be a possibility well this is really scary because they might want to put these people in places or situations where they're even more unsafe you know i mean it's bad enough you people can barely live out of their car in in certain areas and now they really have nowhere to go uh it's it's just heartbreaking it's sad, and you know what phrase comes to me uh, from a famous movie? Soylent Green is people. Soylent Green is people. I will leave it at that. Yeah. Just think about it, because, you know, that was, again, a foreshadowing in so many ways. They say DNA tests are banned in Israel. Isn't that curious? And in reality, as we were talking about Netanyahu, um, you know, there's some Polish roots there, and I believe it was Milikowski was the name that his um, predecessor, well, his, his grandfather, I believe, is the one that changed his name uh, to Netanyahu. So, you know, it, it's interesting because a lot of times I've said that the control system has really given us the versions of Christianity and Islam that we have today. I, I do not believe that the original versions of Christianity that were out there resemble what we have today at all, uh, not, not even close. Um, and yet, I, I haven't mentioned, uh, you know, the quote-unquote Jewish faith, because in my mind, again, when you look at what is a faith, I think it's in reference to the afterlife, typically. You know, what do you think happens after we leave the physical vehicle? And when you look to uh, Judaism, it, it really doesn't occupy itself with that question. It really doesn't. And in fact, um, you know, many were in fact atheists in, in so many ways. It's not about, and it's been actually even written when you start going into certain circles. It's not about the afterlife. It's about the here and now. It's about how our how is a certain group of people going to behave, react, and live their lives in this reality now? It's interesting because, you know, Israel didn't exist, they say, again, from, you know, 70 AD, the destruction of the temple, and then, you know, spread out diaspora and then brought back after uh, the atrocities of WW2, which led many people to have sympathies to say, well, hey, this group needs a homeland. But then again, uh, the homeland for so many Americans, Native Americans, has been taken from them, never given back. You know, th there's, say, the Cherokee, for instance. You know, their homelands, you know, often... You would find them in, in the Carolinas, in Georgia and stuff there. They don't have a homeland there. There's not a separate nation for the Cherokee Nation there. You know, and this is maybe a little, you know, touchy. But we can find it with other groups. I think of the, um, well, you could go over and talk about the Kurds. There's no Kurdish homeland. No independent nation for the Kurdish people. So why this? Because in my mind, this is completely about something totally different. Again, it's about the here and now and controlling this reality. And, you know, that, that's something that a lot of people don't want to face, I think. Or, again, the 
what feels to me the manufactured, and it is manufactured because, again, there were debates on, you know, things like who was uh, the real historical Jesus Yeshua. There were debates on that. And, in fact, there were more books, scriptures, that were left out of the B-I-B-L-E than that were included. Far more, far more. The ones that didn't agree with what became the unified version given to you by the Roman Empire, uh, they were eradicated and burned. Book burnings, you know, cyber book burnings still happen, book burnings still happen. It's all how you control the narrative. And yet you have people waking up to things on a high degree, but they're still blindly following uh, the religious lines. <clears throat> in fact, even more so in so many ways. When, when we look to things like this, 1803, Japanese fishermen reportedly encountered a mysterious craft known as the Utsuro Bune off the coast of Hitachi province. Inside was a strange woman with pale skin, red hair, and an unknown language. The craft bore symbols resembling ancient hieroglyphs, sparking speculation about its origins. Some believe the Masuda Iwafune, a 800-ton monolith in Asuka, Japan, could be linked to the tale possibly serving as a terrestrial mimic or tribute to this enigmatic encounter of what looks to be a perfect little saucer. You know, there, there are tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of encounters and strange anomalies that point to the fact that very advanced beings have been here and, in fact, are still here and still coming here. And in fact, also uh, perhaps running the show. <laughs> definitely running the show because they understand they've they've seen humanity go through these cycles for hundreds hundreds of years so that's something that you know is kind of against us because we are going through it you know for from our perspective the first time but i don't know why they don't have these these should be in all children's coloring books <laughs> these should be these should just be common knowledge these should be in kindergarten these should be everywhere so that people can ask questions and say who are we but you know usually in this world they give you your education they teach you only what they need you to know and then it's not until some life tragedy happens that you start to look around and say hey this isn't right you know but maybe if we keep visualizing something like i said about put all of this information in kindergarten books put it in coloring books let let the children decide because i think their uh, ability to navigate this reality is way better than ours and there's so much declassified documents that give things away we've we've talked about the weather control geo modification uh, declassified documents about the uh, essentially free energy ones that have been buried uh, memorandum 6751s and FBI document declassified 2010 revealing information about extra dimensional beings who operate UFOs uh, the author Mead Lane was a director of Borderland Sciences Research Associates at the time Interestingly, the document is dated July 8th, 1947, the exact same day as the Roswell incident. Um, and again, it goes through several things. And it, the document states, part of the disks carry crews. Others are under remote control, or what we might call drones. Uh, this says that their mission is peaceful. The visitors contemplate settling on this plane of existence. Visitors are human-like, but much larger in size. They are not excarnate earth people but come from their own world they do not come from any planet as we use the word but from an etheric planet which interpenetrates with our own it's not perceptible to us the bodies of the visitors and the craft also automatically materialize on entering a vibratory rate of our dense matter the discs possess a type of radiant energy or a ray which will easily disintegrate any attacking ship. They re-enter the etheric at will and so simply disappear from our vision without trace. I thought this was interesting. The region from which they come is not the astral plane, but corresponds to the locus mm -hmm. or talus. Now, loka, it, it literally means world, and it's Sanskrit. It's a Sanskrit term because, again, the answers to all this are, are right there in, in the Vedic and uh, all the other texts from the Mahabharata, 
the Ramayana, uh, the Bhagavad Purana, all the Puranas, you know, again, the, the vast reservoir of Hindu texts uh, just dwarf anything that's biblical uh, in nature. There's, there's tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of pages of material here, just like the original uh, Sumerian uh, stories vastly dwarf uh, anything, again, that is biblical in nature. Uh, you know, the Bible is not that big. It's a very small book compared to some of the ones that are available. And, you know, the, you can find a lot more answers outside of it than you're going to find in it. But most people haven't even read it from cover to cover, haven't even compared different um, interpretations of it, and haven't even looked into the origin of some of the words to see that it's been totally, again, re a revised historical uh, document. It's a, it's, it's always under revision. In fact, so they probably cannot be reached by radio, but probably can by radar if a signal system can be devised for that apparatus. This was just curious. You know, there's so many curious documents, uh, and there's things that are left over that are just amazing uh, and show advanced technology and understanding of the geometry that we might call sacred geometry as you look at Fort Bertange in the Netherlands. Yeah, star forts, there are t uh, thousands of them. This little post, I was iffy about reptilians ruling the planet till I saw this article. Meditation can be harmful and even make mental health problems worse. What they want is, is just dumb, compliant slaves. They have literally manipulated our DNA and they're consistently manipulating our DNA in order to dumb us down and so sometimes when you reach people and they just can't understand they really can't understand and it's because they they've been dumbed down to that degree where they cannot absorb certain things it's even programmed into our DNA in some cases not everybody and then when you do certain practices like intentionally draw in uh, the life force, the ki, the chi, the prana, when you are doing things that raise your vibration and frequency, like meditation, uh, you can turn your own DNA back on. And this is why we have that just massive, massive cosmic divide going on between um, the true zombified world that they are really uh, heading off a cliff in a zombie apocalypse and they just can't see it because so much of their perceptive abilities have been waylaid by the system. You know what's so funny about this um, title here, meditation can be harmful and even make mental health worse. Well, the problem is, is when you are moving up in vibration, you're going to be asked to address things uh, life isn't just going to let you go up and and ignore stuff that's not how it works so in some ways they're right but then after you do process these problems and these lingering issues that you've been hanging on to you let that all fall away and you do get to go up and rise in frequency and you get to process more things so no it's not always easy but there's so many tests and scientific studies and done over and over and over how meditation can really help the energy body and it can really help your body heal itself too emotionally if you have a lot of stuff that's just in there it's blocking you from finding that thing that's going to heal you and, and meditation can help you sift through the stuff and help you find that thing so it's very useful yeah things are not as they appear this is a fun one i like this one <laughs> i like this one a lot how they uh they put one mask over another or do they yeah and and this is the reality you got to keep peeling the masks away and you got to keep peeling the layers away until you get to the the true core um and so many people now you know as we started with uh they're not going to trust uh, medical science anymore, uh, but they're still trusting science in a, in a different way, whether it's, you know, looking at these quote-unquote what might be fringe theories uh, regarding the, the cycles that, that come uh, periodically to the, to the world, and yet 
questioning the fact that, okay, well, where do we get the evidence for those cycles? Well, it, it's ultimately filtered through uh, the same science. And so, you know, as long as they take the blame away from a control system that creates a, a lot of the cycles, uh, they're taking the blame away from themselves. And, you know, you could blame it on anything else other than the system but there really is one system that's operating this and pulling all the puppet master strings you know who's behind the curtain the great wizard of oz what does that wizard of oz really look like and you know this is how they trick and so much of humanity is is really uh less aware than this puppy uh, it's true it's frightening it is frightening because, again, this is how witches get burned. This is how whole uh, whole tribes of people are eradicated because, again, they said, you know, that's a witch. She's putting a spell on you. Or they're just savages. They're not like you. Uh, you know, whatever it is that they do to get the masses to carry torches and cause destruction because they use us to, to cause this destruction. They use humanity to eliminate humanity is the bottom line, and that is just insanity. It's belief. They control that belief system. So if someone believes strong enough that something else is a threat and it could really harm them or their family, they're going to do whatever they think they have to do to save themselves and their family. It's, it's very frightening out there. It's time to pull back the curtain and expose the real controllers. Indeed. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.